start off with uh, some introductions. Um, and so we would ask that you would uh, put into the chat, um, as some of you have already uh, done, your name, uh, your ministry, or organization that you represent, um, as well as the city uh, that you are uh, currently residing in. Um, and uh, my name is uh, Pastor uh, Peter Watts, and I am one of the co-founders of the Village Network, um, and I pastor uh, the Rock Church uh, here in Los Angeles, uh, right near uh, downtown, in between USC and downtown uh, LA. Uh, and so, uh, Cedric, you want to uh, introduce yourself? Uh, Cedric Nelms, uh, pastor of Chosen Generation Fellowship Church over in uh, North Long Beach. Uh, I am one of the co-hosts of the Village Network. And uh, like Peter, I'm just excited and glad for you all to be here today. And today uh, we uh, have a special uh, guest speaker who will uh, be uh, speaking and talking about her organization and the work uh, that she does with uh, young people and young adults and older adults uh, who are pursuing um, uh, advanced education or furthering their education um, and, um, and uh, ministry uh, experience uh, as well. And so what we'd like to do is just to check in uh, with folks. Um, it's been a crazy week. It's been a crazy week. Uh, and so uh, we'd like to just check in to uh, gauge everybody's temperature just to really see, see how you're doing. Um, you know, at this point. And so uh, we want to uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, um, your city, your ministry, and yeah, well, check in with us. How, how are you feeling, um, you know, this week from these past week's uh, events? Not all at one time. Exactly. <laughs> everybody's waiting on everybody else. No, I think everybody wants to be courteous. Uh, my name is Ricardo Arce. I get the privilege and the honor to lead out a small congregation here in the city of Hawthorne, uh, Destin, LA. And also we have a, a nonprofit uh, called uh, Destin Youth. Uh, been in working with the youth for the last, uh, let's say, 16 years, my wife and I. Um, I may not uh, look young, but I'm young in spirit. Amen. And uh, I just thank God for the opportunity. Uh, Dr. Cedric is my friend and a, a brother. And uh, Peter, you and I pretty much have uh, interacted one, uh, with one another a couple of times at your conferences and so forth. And I thank God for the opportunity. Hello, everyone. Welcome to you. Thank you, sir. Come on. OK, you guys can hear me? Yep. All right, cool. Yeah, my name is Michael Lessier. Uh, I, I am a member of Holy Tabernacle of God um, uh, located in L.A., California, off of Florence and Van Ness. My ministry is uh, evangelist. Uh, I've been ordained as the evangelist, and I was invited into this um, uh, meeting uh, by Tyrone Phillips, a friend of mine, a pastor that I know I've uh, been known for a few years, and I'm just here to be a sponge. Um, it's been a crazy year, of course. You know, you know, it's been a crazy year. Uh, of course, I've I've had my ups and downs and things like that. But uh, I'm looking forward to 2021 and really getting to the to the um, city of LA. Really. Mm -hmm. I think you may have frozen there. Oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good to see you again. So I'll go next. Um, all right, so my name is Susanna Wade. As you can see, I am an associate pastor at Marble Collegiate Church, and we're located in New York City. Uh, it's a reform. So yeah. Oh, you want just a frozen? <laughs> you were frozen. Uh, you were you frozen. Were, you were frozen. How long? You uh, probably about ten seconds, and so it just picked up where you left off. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm just like I said. I'm just trying to. You know, I'm, I'm trying to incorporate the Jesus that's in, in inside me. I'm trying to in, incorporate it 
with with a user to use this and, and get information from here and use it as a bridge in order to incorporate uh Jesus into the into the community. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I kind of I kind of fall short right there. I give them Jesus, which is okay, but you know, we gotta, you know, we gotta establish relationships and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm just here to just listen. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, Susanna, you're good. Okay, okay sorry. So, yeah, so uh, the Associate Minister Marble Collegiate Church, we're located in New York City. It's a Reformed Church in America, um, denominational church. And this is my first time in the group. I was sent an invitation by Lorraine. Um, and I assume she sent that to everyone who's associated with our Black Caucus. So um, I definitely wanted to um, log in and, and understand what this was all about. Really happy to know this is, is some type of um, an opportunity that revolves around outreach and, and um, walking alongside others. Um, I've worked in outreach for, uh, gosh, many, many years. And so um, my heart is definitely there. So I'm, I'm looking forward to being in collaboration with others and um, any way in which I, I am able to to walk along with you guys, walk alongside others and, and help to try and make a difference in the world. Um, I'm passionate about that. Um, so far as checking in on the temperature, <laughs> uh, it's been an overwhelming um, past few days. And um, I'm just trying to just move from one day to the next right now. Um, just still being, this is still all very overwhelming and um, spending a lot of time in prayer and talking to family and people around me just to sort of, just to get from one day to the next, but it, it really is just an overwhelming period. So I welcome opportunities like this to just to be with others. Um, I really, uh, so thank God for Zoom. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And, you know, uh, I don't know if we've never, I don't think we've met uh, officially, yeah. but uh, I am the, uh, 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 coordinator for the ABC, and um, and uh, we've been praying for you and uh, Marble Collegiate. For those of you that don't know, their church caught fire uh, about a month ago. Yeah. yeah, one of our collegiate churches. Yeah. yeah, one of the collegiate churches. Yeah, and uh, and so yeah, so uh, we're you. definitely praying. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome, Pastor Casey. Good to see you. Good morning, all. Good to be seen. Happy New Year to you all. We're just doing introductions. Oh, Samuel Casey, um, pastor, founder of New Life Christian Church in the city of Fontana, California, as well as the executive director of COPE, uh, a 501c3 faith-rooted uh, community organizing group uh, in the Inland Empire called uh, Congregations Organized for Prophetic Engagement. Welcome. I see we have Damon. Are you uh, uh, available to speak to introduce yourself, Damon? Yes, sir. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for uh, for having me. My name is Damon Owens, a pastor of uh, Genesis Church here in the Oakland uh, Bay Area. Um, I also sit as the uh, as an uh, as the executive vice president for uh, the Let Access Labs. Uh, the digital divide is real. Um, our, our goal as a tech company is to help urban and under-resourced and marginalized and poor and working poor communities throughout the country um, bridge the digital gap. Um, our kids are in trouble, families are in trouble, um, and that we want to be able to help circumvent that problem in a practical, tangible, and affordable way. Um, this week has been challenging, eye-opening, um, but I'm extremely focused. My wife and I were extremely focused. Uh, we're co-laborers together with our church, but we're extremely community focused and uh, we just wanna bring some tangible uh, solutions um, to, to our people uh, within our communities uh, to actually bring some, to increase the, the, the lifestyle or the, uh, bring some life change in regards to uh, people's daily living at the local level. So thanks for having me. Great, thank you. 
And then uh, last and certainly not least, Kim Evans, you want to introduce yourself? Good morning. I am the founder of Counter Cultural Consulting, working with churches and um, mortuaries, funeral homes, and cemeteries in regards to um, COVID, resor COVID resources. I'm a former pastor at Faithful Central, working with uh, volunteers as well as um, an educator with the King's University. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Mm -hmm. You know, Damon, you were talking about the uh, digital divide. Uh, so my wife, uh, she uh, uh, became the um, chief of staff uh, for uh, LUSD Board District uh, 7. And so she was telling me, you know, they're working on you know, plans and things like that. And, she, and I found out that, uh, what's it, um, Nickerson Gardens, uh, you know, the project Nickerson Gardens in Watts. Do you know that that is a dead zone? meaning that there is no Wi-Fi access for anybody that lives in, the, in that project. And so they're trying, to figure, yeah, they're trying to figure out how to uh, open up, say, a school uh, parking lot so those families that live in that project, those kids can have access to internet. So even when they gave them hotspots, they still could not connect if you lived in Nickerson Gardens. Talk about digital divide and injustice and like, it's crazy. It, it is. Um, I think this is, is the new digital, uh, the new apartheid, I believe, that's going unheard. Um, it's unacceptable, especially Sam Casey mentioned. Um, it is um, an outright shame that we have our we have parents who who are now have to be teachers who never attended PTA meetings. Um, it's very very difficult for them, and uh, the technology that we have. You know, we, we work with rural areas, but more so we want to really focus on highly density populated urban communities like Watts, San Francisco, Punish Point, Oakland, uh, to bring connectivity to those, uh, to those, uh, I hate using that word projects, but to those community development, to those communities um, where people can at least have some type of uh, equity within, within those communities. Look forward to working with you guys. Yeah, amen, amen. Well, our um, uh, topic of presentation uh, for today uh, is around uh, education. My um, my background has uh, has has been in education. I was a um, former uh, teacher uh, for LAUSD in for. Uh, started teaching in 97 at Compton Avenue Elementary School in Watts, right across the street from Markham uh, Middle School, right there in the Haciendas. Um, and then uh, in, 2000, in 2000 or 2001, I uh, moved over to the charter school world um, where I was uh, one of the founding uh, teachers, second grade teachers for uh, View Park um, Elementary School. Um, and I was with View Park uh, for about seven years as a teacher and then grade level chair um, and then instructional coach. And then uh, the organization then approached me and asked me if I would uh, be, a, if I would found um, a middle school. And so I ended up uh, starting uh, Thurgood Marshall uh, Charter Middle School in um, 2008 and led that school for about five years. Um, and then I left, my wife took over the school. Um, I left and, and uh, worked from the home office and, um, and started what we call the uh, blended learning program, which was um, um, online education and face-to-face -face instruction uh, happening all in one space. And so, um, uh, that, so that's my uh, career in, uh, in uh, education and it's been my passion, um, even uh, as part of my ministry. And so um, I met uh, our speaker uh, today uh, when I, uh, left education and went into ministry full time for an organization uh, called World Impact, which uh, focused on uh, empowering um, indigenous uh, urban leaders uh, that would uh, plant churches and, um, and lead ministries. Um, and we had a private Christian school, school K through eight, um, and then we also had a teen center. Uh, and so there were teens that were in the neighborhood who were going to the local public schools who would come to our teen center um, every day after school. 
Um, and I began to learn about uh, this program called Ascending Lights. I met uh, a young lady by the name of Frankie Joe. That was, that's her name, Frankie Joe. And then I met a young man by the name of Byron Appen. Um, and these uh, young people had graduated uh, from high school um, and they were attending community college. Um, but they were part of a program called Ascending Lights. And so uh, I had an opportunity to meet Ann uh, Lopsinger, who is our uh, guest uh, speaker today, um, and learned a lot more about Ascending Lights and uh, the work that they do. And so I thought uh, when Cedric and I were planning for this new year, um, I said, hey, well, a lot of things are going around uh, with regards to education, like we talk about connectivity and uh, you know, the stay at home orders that happened and parents doing, you know, kids doing Zoom and, you know, kids not graduating or kids graduating, uh, or, you know, this past year and uh, just all the challenges uh, that were taking place. And so I said, I think it'd be a good idea to, to have Ann uh, come uh, and share. And so, um, uh, Ann, you want to uh, introduce yourself and, um, and we can jump right into um you know, our presentation for today all right well again thank you peter and cedric also i mean it's been just a joy to be able to be co-ministers with you with your um christian leaders a uh, little bit about myself um is that my my background is in social work and I always tell people that I, I always emphasize social and de-emphasize work. So I really try to make it a, a pleasant experience, uh, and basically an empowering experience for however I uh, get into different ministries. Um, I have come from um, Canada. So coming to the States, you know, people say, oh, well, the States is very much the same. Well, gosh, no, actually, <laughs> It's a different country <laughs> in so many ways. And when I first came down, it was just before Gretzky came. And so I used to say I was the forerunner for Gretzky's coming down to the Kings. So uh, it has been a long haul for me. I've um, had a whole bunch of variety of experiences, but probably the one that has been the most impactful, um, in addition to what I'm now doing, has been working out of a multi-purpose center in South LA um, in 92 when the violence broke out and what it meant to, to be a part of um, the healing experience. And as you're all talking and sharing about what this, you know, this experience of last week, experience of the whole year of last year, actually, it's almost like a traumatic thing that you just keep cycling back to all of the, the trauma that has been going on. And for me, I mean, can't have words to, to totally describe what I'm feeling, the, the anger, um, the whole nine yards. It just is beyond words for me. So what I'm trying to do is obviously like we all is praying to our God and just asking for wisdom and guidance in dealing with this and just feeling blessed that I belong to an agency called Ascending Lights. Um, and the full title is Ascending Lights Leadership Network. And the whole value and the vision and the mission is that we are working with churches to help strengthen and develop Christian leaders for them in their churches so that they can make a difference, impact, um, decrease violence, decrease the whole um, educational world where people don't have access to it. And so we do it by basically giving a full scholarship communi to community college. And it includes all of the, the needs that the student would also require. And part of that is in addition to books and supplies, paying for their fees, uh, pencils, pens, goggles, swim, swimsuit for a, a swim class, what have you, we most importantly give them a mentor. And this mentor will journey with the student one-on-one -on -one and will meet with them at least once a week. And what they'll do is with a holistic approach, they have an opportunity to discuss not only their grades and how they're doing in school, but 
we also have come to understand how important it is to realize that their outside world also impacts their ability to study. And so we will then work with them and say, okay, so what's going on in your work world? Because pretty much all our students need to work as well. What's going on in your family? What's going on in your church? How is your prayer life? All of that sort of thing. And so we're pretty, what some people might think intrusive um, or intensive. But the reason is that we have found that many of our students come from a world where they have um, few skills to help them succeed post-secondary. And so it's a big learning curve for them because many of them, their parents did not go to community college or university. So they're, you know, they can't give something that they don't have to their young you know, son or daughter. And so being able to give them this mentor gives them an opportunity to learn not only how to be a good student, but to also learn what are the life skills they need to become a professional. Um, and that's probably the big thing is that, yes, um, you want to, to reach this goal, but it's to realize that you have to live in a world that has a lot of different rules and regulations and structures that are not familiar to you. And so it's helping them to become familiar with what to expect, not only during their academic life with us, but beyond. Um, and as you know, Peter mentioned, we have uh, Frankie Joe and Byron both who are our graduates. Uh, did you realize Peter that Frankie Joe just got a job up in San Francisco working? Yeah, so just amazing. So we do stay in touch with our students um, and all of that. As you saw in the video, we ended up um, basically providing everything. Gary, who was the gentleman in the beginning, he is um, one of the founders along with his wife who pretty much established Ascending Lights because they wanted to do something in relation. Am I understood? Because it looks like I'm getting a disconnect, sir. Are you hearing me fine? Oh, good, okay. Oh, interesting. Uh, so anyway, Gary and Marjorie wanted to do something beyond just um, instant or temporary solutions. And so they went into South LA and its neighborhoods and asked all the different pastors, what can we do to set up a system to help basically fight poverty and violence in your community? And without exception, they all said, educate our young people. And so that was pretty much the, the, the running order for Ascending Lights to begin. And we are now um, going on 29 years of service in the community. We do serve not only South LA, but pretty much everything down into Compton, Long Beach, um, all the way north to Altadena, North Pasadena, any area that finds it hard to, to find money. So they are all low income that we work with, the families that we will serve. And the only true requirement um, for our candidates is that in addition to being low income and involved in their church, but their involvement needs to be um, a ministry that they have been giving to the church, not something that they've been, you know, encouraged to do because uh, we want to see that they have a love for Jesus that they are involved and want to make their church better and their community as a result of all of that and so being able to have that kind of a student um, the other thing is the motivation as we well know if um, the motivation is not there it's really not a good fit um, especially for the young student they um, if they're not ready for it, they're not going to be able to succeed well. And unfortunately, the result is going to be that they are, get discouraged and will we'll drop out. And so we try to advocate and discern with them, is this something that you really want versus something that your parents want or your pastor wants? And so if they want it, 
then it's great. It's good to go kind of a deal. The application process is such that we help discern all of that. And part of that is to figure out to how much do they understand about themselves? So we'll ask them to do a personal profile uh, inventory, very similar to Myers-Briggs. Mm -hmm. And the big one that we do is we'll do a career assessment. And what's really fantastic about this assessment is that even if a student knows what they wanna do, we still ask them to fill it out like they don't know what they wanna do. Because in the end, <clears throat> the results will show and affirm that yes, this is what you're made to be, is you're made to be a nurse or you're made to be a social worker or a teacher or a, you know, law enforcement. What the career assessment also offers to our students is a variety of, well, you can think beyond just education in the elementary school. There's a variety of different ways that you can educate people. There's a variety of ways that you can be a social worker, or there's a variety of ways that you go into the health profession. So it helps to expand their ideas and then to have opportunities to consider more options for their life. And that's what helps direct us then into their major. So that when they do go to community college, it's what major are you wanting to do? Because if they're motivated, if they're in the career that God has given the gifts for, they end up excelling. Um, and probably one of the best examples is a student that I had, uh, my little Lupita, she wanted to be, she was good in the sense of she wanted to be a teacher. So education was something that she was interested in. She, interestingly enough, was as sweet as pie, but grew up in a really tough neighborhood, but just as sweet as all get out. Well, I could just see even middle school kids just eating her up and spitting her out in no time flat. And so we, it took a while, but, you know, discerned with her, you know, education, yes, but let's look at other options. She ended up um, going into early childhood education. Her grades went through the roof. She ended up with a 3.3 overall GPA when she graduated with her, a, uh, with her AA degree and was accepted with no problem into uh, Cal State LA that has a very good reputation for an early education um, bachelor's degree. So that whole idea of finding the, God, the gifts that God has given you and using them in such a way that this is gonna help you decide what is the best major for you to be able to witness in the most powerful way for you. As I mentioned, we're very holistic. So again, we go into um, their personal life, um, realizing that many times when the grades start showing that they're struggling, we will jump in sooner than later. And the reason for that is that the hole is not as big to, to climb out of as a result of that. And so what happens is we will have um, what I like to call our come to Jesus conversations. So it's a very much a team approach. And so we will have the mentor, we will have the student in the first go around sit and talk and say, you know, what's going on for you in being able to um, ID what might be the issue? And nine times out of 10, we discover that, yeah, something is going on in their personal life. And when we help give them assistance with that, um, it often is a turnaround period. And so again, for example, another gift that we can offer our students is actually um, counseling services. And so we have, uh, connections with Rose in Watts, as well as the Fuller Seminary in Pasadena to give our students counseling services that they can go to. Because uh, we often find that if they haven't dealt with it, and with my background as a, as a clinical background, I know the damage that, that trauma has done. I've worked in a, um, a residential service for abused girls, and I know that it's damage for life. So if you don't deal with your trauma from the past, 
it, it carries over into your life as an adult. Um, you just can't help it type of a deal. So it's helping them learn to, to be the, in control of that versus their trauma being in control of them. Um, the other thing that we give them, as I mentioned, is the mentor one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and it's about an hour every week while they're in session with the student. And they will work with them yeah, academically, again, helping them with their English. A lot of them have weak writing and reading and comprehension skills. Most of them have um, difficulty with math. Um, I am one that will definitely attest to, I don't like math, never was created for math. Um, actually, when I got accepted into my program in Long Beach, <laughs> they told me I had the makings of a good social worker. And when I asked them why, they said, well, you really suck in math. And I said, well, I could have told you that for free. I know I'm terrible in math. So we help uh, tutor our students all the way up through to statistics. Um, and they, they all succeed with it. I mean, it's just an amazing experience. Um, the other things that we give them would be um, transportation costs because we realize that our students struggle to get money to get them to school. Uh, we will help them with food expense. So the days they're on campus, they can buy their, their lunches. So they don't have to worry about that issue. Um, everything that they can think of with regards to what a course would require, we will ask of them to satisfy that. So we will never say no to any book that they need. Um, we also have um, what we call a church liaison. And what that is, is that is the connection between Ascending Lights, the student and the church. When the student is accepted to our program, the understanding is that the scholarship actually belongs to the church. And that's because again, we're helping to nurture and develop that person to be a church leader for them. And so the church is involved in this journey. And the way they get involved is we have a church liaison as well as the pastor if it's a different person. Because many times the pastor, you know, has enough on their plate to have to be able to, to be able to journey with this person. So the church liaison is somebody who will meet monthly with the student and more than just say, hey, hi, how's it going after church service? What they'll do is they'll set a time once a month to have coffee and say, hey, what's going on? How are you not only developing academically, but more importantly, how is your relationship with Jesus growing and nurturing and impacting you as well as your ministry? We wanna make sure that that is a really strong bond because the mentor that is assigned to a student does not necessarily have the same faith background and tradition as the student. And our job is not to um, have the student look at other faiths at all, it's to nurture that faith in that student where they come from. And so that's why the church liaison is just so critical to be able to meet with them and encourage that. The only question our mentors will be asking is, are you praying daily with scripture? You know, is your relationship with God developing in such a way that, you know, yes, you're really impacted by what is going on in your faith and your church life. So that's um, a critical one. So once a semester for the fall and the spring, the pastor and the church liaison will receive what we do um, at the end of every semester, which is a review document. And we'll talk with the student and say, hey, how did it go for your semester? That's all based on our weekly meetings. And so once a week, we take notes on what has been significant for the student, the successes as well as their challenges. And then at the end of the semester, we'll sit down and, and review how did that semester go. Um, and part of that is looking at the goals that the semester, at the beginning of the semester, the student has identified so that they can in turn, in the course of the semester, 
look to see how they're achieving their goal. So for example, if a student says one of their goals is to uh, get an A in their course, well, let's start looking at how you're doing in your tests and your assignments. If you are pulling in something that's lower than an A, then we're gonna have conversations before the end of the semester to start looking at how can we look at other options to make those A's happen. Um, the one student that I worked with, his um, one of his goals was spiritual, was to increase the amount of time that he spent with scripture weekly. And so that's very measurable. And so we were able to work on that together. So having all of that, then the mentor shares that with the pastor and the church liaison so that they can follow up and give that support. Because what we want in the end is for that student to be able to stand next to the pastor and or church liaison in the sanctuary and the pastor being able to say, this here is a wonderful example of a Christian leader. And because it's all holistic and we're looking at how can Jesus impact your life in such a way to bring it on. The other service that we provide our students is three times a year we have what we call our leadership training and actually at 12 30 today so in a few more hours we're going to be starting our leadership training and today it's going to be an interesting one because it's communicating effectively in the virtual world so um, very timely with regards to everything that has been going on for our students in this last year having to go remotely online for all of their classes, as well as dealing with all of the, the, the nastiness of what's been going on in our world as far as COVID, as far as the racial tensions, and now as far as what has happened at the Capitol this last week. So um, we very much bring that into the reality of how can you apply this now into your life? Um, so that we're taking into consideration this afternoon is um, such examples for would be, you know, how do you communicate a difficult conversation with somebody remotely? Um, because now we can't do it face to face type of a deal. So we try to make those leadership trainings as practical and as applicable as to what's going on in their life at this point. And, you know, overall, I would say that our students really take advantage of our mentors, which is great. Uh, just for example, some statistics, you know, that our students have given us is last spring for the GPA of all of our students, it ended up as a 3.5 um, GPA across the board. So none of our students failed. The vast majority got A's or 4.0's as, um, as a grade. And then in the summer, all of our students who took summer classes, their average was a 4.0. So they really took advantage. They did the hard work. Um, they got through their anxieties of what it was like to have to go online. Because as we all know, online is not the best for everyone. Um, and some people who are more tactile and needing the personal touch found it really challenging, but with the help and support of their mentor, they really stepped up to the plate and did fantastic. Um, and just those grades result in an overall for our program. I would say the average GPA for the community college system in LA is probably about a 3.4 our student, excuse me, a 2.4. Our students actually is a 3.4 when they graduate. And what that does for them is it gives them a leg up for when they transfer because we do help our students transfer. And it's not just a matter of getting their 60 units for their, um, uh, for their ability to go on to university. It's their 60 units plus all the transfer units they need to transfer then as a junior, which means they only have half of their university cost to worry about when they go to university. And all of our students that have applied for university have been accepted. And all of our students who went to university 
graduated with a bachelor's. So um, they really have learned the, the life skills and that whole idea of what it means to incorporate all aspects of their life into their succeeding in their academic world. And so with that, you know, it's just um, such a wonderful opportunity for them to be able to, 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 for me especially, to see the confidence that they come in, that they leave with. I mean, my Lupita, when she came in, I would ask her, you know, in our weekly sessions, so what had you decide, what made you decide to do that particular, you know, action that led to you failing, you know, kind of a deal? And she would shrug her shoulders most of the time. Well, what was great is that probably a year and a half into the experience, she started with the conversation of saying, well, you know what, I messed up on something and this is why I believe it happened. So her critical skills really shot through the roof um, to be able to, to realize how much everything can impact. You know, one of the questions that we ask our students um, is, is there any kind of an addiction that you're dealing with? Well, our students, um, they sign a contract and one of the points on the contract is that they don't use drugs and they you know, don't use alcohol, all of that sort of thing. So that usually is not the issue. With another student, sat down with her and said, why don't you consider this? I think that perhaps your procrastination is an addiction. And she looked at me, she was like, what do you mean by that? And I said, well, let's look at what the definition of an addiction is. And it's something that basically messes up your life, you know, that you're no longer functioning at the level of your capacity, you know, that dysfunction has, has entered the realm of your world. And it took her a while, but she, she came to the conclusion that, yeah, you know, my procrastinating was a big obstacle to being able to succeed in college. And so that's the, the joy of the, the holistic approach is being able to look at how can they work in such a way that there's no topic off the table that can be discussed. Um, and I think through the relationship of the mentor not going ballistic, so to speak, on the student when they've had a rough patch of an experience, um, it gives them the courage to be able to face those things and learn how to communicate and deal with them in such a way that they can turn it around and then use it to be more compassionate and more serving because they realize that no one has to be perfect to be a minister and to be a witness to Christ. It's that we are redeemed because of Christ and it's being able to take those experiences and transform them and resurrect yourself, so to speak. And so all of that is just so important in part of their life lessons and what they're learning with us. So it's not just a, let's help them get a grade that's good, but let's help them grow as a Christian leader. Um, and so pretty much that's you know where we're at. I thought maybe open it up if anyone had any questions and then I can kind of go into, you know, what the next step is as far as um, continuing a relationship or establishing relationships with you all. Great. So um, right before we go into a q and I want to uh, uh, put a pin right here um, and I want to introduce uh, someone to you guys. Um, I told you that my, uh, uh, my former um, career been in education and um, I was an elementary school teacher at View Park uh, and uh, the young lady that is on the uh, call with us uh, is one of my former parents um, at View Park. Her, uh, her daughter and the group of kids that I first started teaching there at second grade and then I followed them to third grade, uh, they, were the, they were the kids that actually made me believe in education and teaching again. Uh, and so, um, so I've always kept up, I always keep up with all the kids that I've ever taught or the principal of and parents and things like that. Um, and so uh, Carol, uh, is here to give a uh, just a, a quick kind of 
three minute um, uh, info uh, for you. Um, and she's with uh, Bridge Builders uh, LA um, and they give scholarships to uh, uh, students uh, that are going to attend four year uh, universities. And so uh, Carol, you might wanna introduce yourself and- I would and love to do that. First of all, thank you for saying young lady. <laughs> I'm already humbled. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I am a young 57 year old. So as he said that, to God be the glory, I received that. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be skipping the rest of the day. I'm a young lady. Um, so yes, good morning. Um, like Mr. Watts, I am, well, I'm a former educator in the sense that I retired from 35 years of teaching um, in June. So I spent my entire career, which started in 1984 in Lenox School District. What happened in the course of my education career is that I was rearing two children all of which went through View Park as well. And the first being my son, who's now 30, that Mr. Watts did not have in his classroom, but he um, had a great experience with obtaining and securing scholarships for college. And at that point, I thought for you to get scholarships for college, you had to find a cure for cancer or build a rocket ship for NASA. I had no idea what scholarships look like and what that meant. Candace is the daughter that Mr. Watts had the fun privilege of teaching in her challenging little independent ways. Um, so when it was her turn to now do the scholarship journey, I got my hands down and dirty. And what I did that I didn't know at the time was that I created a real system on how to acquire scholarships. So one disclaimer, Mr. Watts, I did send him, um, I did send you a flyer about bridge builders. They are doing a scholarship now, but that is not what I'm affiliated with. I just happen to know about scholarships and a lot of people that do them. So he does have access to one of my flyers. So what have I done? So about six years ago, I started a scholarship acquisition business. Why did I do that? Because both of my kids went to college debt-free. So between their scholarships and having savvy information on how to quote unquote, utilize a system for your betterment, I realized our community does not know what they're doing. And no discredit to high school college counselors, but they do not know how to service our children. What they ultimately do is send children to a national website and say, this is where you find scholarships. And that is exactly where you do not find scholarship. And Mr. Cedric, I think you and I have a good friend, Candace Arnold. So Candace Arnold is one of my major cheerleaders. She attended one of my scholarship workshops and she is like one of my best supporters. And she was able to take advantage of my system and it's very aggressive, it's very powerful. It is not for the faint of heart, but I am here to tell you, if you can leave an urban high school like my children with forty-six or $56,000 of scholarships, that can change your life. So what I wanted this community of people to realize is that my services are absolutely available. The virtual world has not changed it in the sense of the aggressiveness. It actually has made it a little more accessible because my system is very aggressive. It allows kids to be in places where they don't have to travel. They can make their needs, their participation, their views. They can do everything right here and get things done. So normally what happens with large groups like yourself, I don't care if it's five of you or 25 of you, um, we never want our young students or participants to have to pay for my services. That normally is not the case. What groups of people do is we decide on an agreeable mutual honorarium, I in turn meet virtually now and give the system to the participants and the students. It works just as well for transfer students as it does for high school students. And I have found that because the, the world is evolving and changing that oftentimes eighth grade is a great time to start and not your senior year. Not, that is, you know, no one goes shopping once the refrigerator is empty. We planned for this before and start shopping for our food before that. So um, I would love to be able just to spread the knowledge. I just believe that a gift is how you're used. And me keeping this information to myself doesn't reach a bigger net of children that need this. And I don't care where they're from. That's another beautiful thing. You can be in Minnesota, you can be in Texas and take advantage of the system because it is not about location. It's about a mindset and having a system. And when the workshop is over, please know, I do not fall off the face of the earth, God willing. 
So the participants are welcome to come back to me at any time. And I've done this for sororities and fraternities. And a kid may say, hey, can you read my personal statement? What do you think about this? Can you write me a letter of recommendation? Whatever it may be. Once they have participated through your stamp of approval and they're in here, then I'm theirs for life. So that's my little three minute commercial on what I do. And uh, Mr. Watts has all of my personal information. So if you wanna reach back out to me, absolutely. Even though I'm retired, I have started a, um, a financial literacy business as well. So Mr. Watts, you know this, Candace and I are now in business together. She's a senior marketing director, I'm a marketing director. So we're actually helping our, our community as well with financial literacy because Compound interest is a wonderful thing and you got to know what it looks like if you're going to build wealth and it starts early. So there we go. Thank you so much. You're and welcome. So what I will uh, do is when our um, uh, session is over, we always send you know, thank you emails and we will uh, put your information uh, in that email that, um, to go out to everybody. Even people who aren't on the call, they'll, they'll get the email as well. Um, and then Excellent. I'll follow up with you. Uh, okay, afterwards. sounds good. All right. So you'll excuse me as I vacate the meeting. God bless you guys. Continue your work. And I look Thank forward you. to seeing and speaking with you later. Yep. Oh, yes. Bye, Mr. Watts. Bye. Take care. You too. All right. Um, all right. Let's take the pen out. Back to Ann. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, here's a question for you, uh, Ann. Um, how, how does one, um, uh, well, let me, before I ask that question, we talk about uh, you know, high school seniors um, and you know, going into a community college and maybe they're not ready at the time and you know, all the, it, what's the age limit? Great question. Yeah, because I know I, I used young students a lot. Um, actually, we don't have an age limit. We just um, re, uh, graduated a student who was in his mid forties with three adult, um, basically adolescent children. So the, the big question is how motivated are they? Um, this could be a, a perfect time during all of this COVID stuff where people who have you know been um, lost hours or even their job might wanna look at considering a different career for themselves. And so um, we do unfortunately focus on students who do not have any degree at all. So the most that they would have coming in with us is their high school diploma. Uh, but, you know, if somebody is, is an older, you know, um, parent or single or what have you, um, we're looking at actually up having a person actually through Peter, um, a man in his 50s who is going to be starting with us. So um, it really isn't the age that we look at. We want to look at the servant heart. Um, that's the, the big reason why Ascending Lights was started. Uh, lots of scholarship programs out in, you know, in, the, in our different communities. Um, but we've never met another one that is so focused on the Christian piece. And as a result, uh, we do not take any government money. So having worked in social agencies in the past that do, oh my gosh, I know the challenges, shall we say, of, of being restricted by the government. Um, so it's wonderful not to be basically curtailed into how can we be as Christian as we want to be, you know, that we make no apologies for that. Um, and God has blessed us, I mean, We've always been given the people we, um, our donors, our foundations, as well as individuals who will support us. The foundations tend to, well, solely support the, the mentors. The individuals will support um, funding or sponsoring a student. And so when we do have people who will sponsor, um, they have the opportunity to meet their student and engage with them. Uh, the student will be very uh, deliberate in at least twice a year acknowledging their thanks for the support that they receive from their sponsors. So um, that's just something that is, you know, par for the course for them. So age, no age group. Thank you. Yeah, um, 
<clears throat> and the reason why I asked that question is because um, I remember when I first went to a, a, a ceremony um, um, celebration of graduates who were uh, speaking and I saw a young man who was like uh, in his 40s or something like that and he was in the program. I was like, oh, so you don't have to be a, a you know straight out of high school. And so then that's when I have a young man uh, uh, in my church, like, like Ann said, he's 50, 50 something years old and uh, he's going to be uh, uh, going into the uh, Ascendant Lights program. And so yeah. I wanted to just bring that out uh, for you guys. Um, can you talk about um, the mentor program? Uh, how does one become a mentor? Okay. Um, in the beginning, our mentors were volunteer, but then the program evolved in such a way that that was a really big commitment because ideally we want them to mentor and journey with their student throughout their, the student's career with us. Um, so now, oh, I think for the last maybe 20 years at least, um, it has been a paid position. The mentors um, are hired primarily. Um, they've had to have, have at least a bachelor's level degree um, involved in their own church. So, you know, in order to expect the, the Christian values, we need to have Christian leader or mentors to be able to journey along with them. Uh, we also, there, Consider them more like a contract in the sense of it isn't a matter of we hire them part time or full time, but we hire them according to how many students do they feel they can handle. So we have one mentor who is happy with one student. We have another mentor who has as many as five students. So it's just a, a real balancing game of whatever. Some of our mentors are also math tutors. And so they will take on um, not only their students to do math, but also will take on students, for example, like my students, um, they'll take on them if they need any kind of math tutoring. Um, again, it's minimum an hour per week per student. Um, that obviously would go up if the student is struggling. So again, depending on the needs of the student, They'll, they'll give them up to maybe even three hours a week. So it really is what is it that the student needs type of a deal. The mentors will also be responsible for um, putting together and facilitating our leadership trainings. So today, for example, all of our mentors have a role in either doing the techie behind the scenes stuff. We have the one mentor doing that. And then everyone else has some presentation that they'll be giving to the students in the course of the four hours of our leadership training. When the COVID is over, we'll go back to in-person where we will then uh, meet at a location and it'll be a full day experience for our students. Um, but we have, um, our graduates are also welcome to attend. So I know today we have a couple of graduates who will be joining us as well. So we really work on, you know, the mentor maintaining relationships beyond. So um, we, we, that's one of the ways we do it. Uh, we also will continue with online in the, um, communications with our students. So monthly, two of our mentors are responsible for sending out information. So hopefully, Peter and Cedric, are you receiving those communications? If not, we've got to change that. Oh, okay. I will definitely make a note on that one. So, um, but those emails give kind of what's going on in the communication or in the education world of um, community college, as well as university. So like, for example, it's like now, if you haven't done your FAFSA, you, you've got basically only two months to do it. Um, what are the um, due dates for application to universities? any kind of uh, monthly information that would help churches share that information, which then brings us into, you know, we can only tap into a small number of, of men and women to uh, mentor and give a scholarship to. So we have created a, uh, another outshoot of our prom, uh, program called I Graduate, 
And what that is, it's trying to reach out to churches, social agencies, um, to be able to offer them our services. So teach them our academic planning tool, for example, help them with some mentoring techniques that they can journey with their students that they are working with. So it kind of helps to spread the, the ripple effect for um, people that would not qualify. So these would be students who are going to community college, but are not necessarily involved in their church in any kind of a ministry. Uh, but they still need the support and the encouragement um, having somebody guide them through the community college experience. Because I mean, the difference is one college, their average time that they spend with a student, if they're lucky in a year, is 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And we spend an hour a week with our students. So, you know, it, it just shows you. And I don't blame them because at this university or community college, you have 60,000 students. So how do you expect to see students effectively? And so we have caught some, some good um, errors in calculations. And so our students, and then we also ask them, okay, if you want to be an early ed teacher, we come up with this academic plan that basically outlines the whole experience of them being at college. So we know what course they need to take for their whole time with us. So if they apply to take or register to take a class, for example, speech that they need for a general ed requirement and it's full that they can't take it, a lot of students will do one of two things. They either just give up and, and don't take anything or they take another class that has nothing to do with getting them to their AA degree. So it's kind of a waste of semester time and money type mm -hmm. of a deal. So we, and then we've learned that we can quote unquote, use one course in two areas for their major and their GE. We'll only count it in one area, but it helps them satisfy their general ed course. So we help them get through faster. So we get our th students through in an average of three and a half years versus the five years it takes the, the most average community college student to get through um, community college. So, so this, uh, the um, uh, I graduate um, uh, mm -hmm. program, um, can you, is this, is this more like a, um, like a, like if the church has a ministry or you know, around education, this, this would be more like of a kind of a, like a college counseling kind of center uh, that a church could uh, do as a ministry and, and use the tools um, and training of I graduate that you guys provide? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we would do a training and actually um, in the next couple of months, we're finishing off now some um, videos to do trainings as well as planning a, a Zoom training for I graduate. And in the course of the, the training, you basically will be introduced to our basically academic tools, as well as mentoring tools, resources of what colleges are offering. Um, so it's just the more information you have. And then the neat thing is that iGraduate also provides ongoing support. So it's not a matter of, okay, you have this one training with us and that's it, very well. It's if you have a question, feel very free to call us back and we can walk you through a specific situation that you have. So however the church would like to organize that, be it an informal that maybe one or two adults are interested in supporting, you know, college, community college students, or creating a ministry, that that's what their, their purpose is in the church. Um, however, you know, you know, as your friend Carol mentioned, um, our information is to share, it's not to hoard. And so it's being able to, to share whatever. So it's like a $25 fee for the training. So, okay. you know, pretty affordable. Great. Great. So. I think Cedric had a question. Yeah, just real quick. I wanted to know, um, I know we're talking about the church and what we can do for those who are part of our ministry, but um, 
um, how does this work or how can it work? And I use the term user friendly. How is this able to be used from an outreach perspective in our communities where our churches reside? So if I have some folks that maybe are not part of our ministry and day-to-day -day operations, but I want to use this as a potential uh, olive branch to our community. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I graduate would be your the answer to that is that um, I know, for example, we have worked with a church um, and they've incorporated into their large community outreach program. And so, yeah, they do not for I graduate, you don't need to be a Christian. You, you can be, you know, anything, you know. Won't go to the other extreme, but yeah, you don't need to be a Christian at all. Um, and that's the one dimension that we don't focus on for iGraduate if the need is there. So like if we were training a church, yeah, we would definitely, you know, include that component, but leave it up to you to fine tune it and to adjust it according to the needs of your community. And that's the beauty of it is that uh, you can adjust the forms, you can adjust how you want to reach out to, to people. But I graduate certainly would be the one to go to the, the community at large. That's good. So customizable. That's really good. Oh, very much so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's founded on the fact that for our students, you know, at the end it says, you know, um, changing or empowering one student at a time. It's because we're able to be so um, fine-tuned and, and cater to that need of that one person, you know? Good. Gotcha. Well, we definitely want to uh, thank you uh, again. Um, and so we want to open the floor up for questions uh, from, from anyone uh, that would like to ask questions at this time. Uh, for those of you who are um, not in LA area, um, I'm not sure about New York, uh, but as far as the state of California is concerned, um, as Carol had mentioned, you know, her program can go beyond just LA. Our program for iGraduate can go for the whole state because basically all the community colleges throughout the state, as well as the university's requirements for transfer, are all the same. Um, there are some differences, but for the most part, not enough to make it that it would be ineffective to use iGraduate. And um, Gary and myself have both helped students up in the San Francisco area, for example, um, finish their community college. So um, iGraduate could be an option for um, any other part of the state. Hey, Ann, Damon Owens here. Um, thank you so much for your presentation this morning. Uh, very intriguing. Uh, I am a, um, I would say, a victim of the Oakland Unified School District, <laughs> uh, who had a chance to, uh, I guess, get uh, the, 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 the community college um, system really, you know, really impacted me greatly because of the accountability at that level. Um, then I had a chance to, you know, you know, transfer over to uh, to a Cal State University. So the <clears throat> you mentioned about uh, there's some people. Well, long story short, just there's some people I, I would like to to get this to on the I graduate piece and to maybe introduce you to here mm -hmm. in the Oakland East Bay. Uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Um, so thank you so much for for this. The question is, how how quickly can can a student um, get onboarded with it? Um, well, the nice thing is that our application time is anytime. So unlike universities and colleges that have due dates, um, we will take a student at any point. So if you, we will even take a student who has started community college. The only criteria is if you have at least two more years of study in a community college. And the reason for that is because of our leadership training component is we want to give them at least 
six trainings um, that address different issues. Now with iGraduate, that feature is not part of that requirement. So, um, you know, th those students are not required to attend leadership training. Uh, as far as readiness, you know, you'd wanna make sure that they have FAFSA. Um, and even if like, you know, March 1st is basically the deadline, um, but you can still apply that you can get your fee waiver if it's too late. So now is the time to really push for them to make sure they have their FAFSA. And it's so true. I would have thought it would have been a natural point for checking off for a high school counselor to make sure that their high school student ready to graduate has taken care of FAFSA. We had a student that didn't. So that was rather shocking for us because that's just such a, a basic requirement. Um, they want to go to the college, for example, um, that would be close to them or that they know has a major that is up their alley. You know, uh, like for example, down here in Rio, Rio Hondo is known for their law enforcement. Um, LA Trade Tech is known for culinary. You know, East LA is for um, early ed. So if they have that option that they can handle, that would be great. I would definitely, I can share with you the, um, the website for the career assessment to get them talking about what is it they'd like to do. Because once you get them saying, oh my gosh, yes, this is for me, that motivation just goes up the roof and they're now at a point where they're willing to do the work. Because without that vision that's been sparked, it's you know kind of like in a boat going whatever way it goes type of a deal. But if you can give them a sense of, of, of ownership and empowerment, that they can control how their life is gonna move forward. It's such a life-changing experience for them. That, that just, for me, empowerment is a big deal. You know, um, you just want it to do that for them. Um, any, any other questions on that, Damon? Or do you have more clarification? Yeah, yeah, and then, you know, it's, I don't mind education or uh, American education the way that the, the structure is now. <clears throat> um, but do you have maybe some modules? Um, because the, the current system creates employer employees. Mm -hmm. How can we turn urban kids, um, young adults from employees, from employee mindset to eventually becoming employers? Because um, economically, we need to be empowered at the at, at the grassroots level because we can't depend on Gavin Newsom, nor can we depend on Joe Biden, whoever's in office, uh, for that money to trickle down to um, urban communities. Yeah, yeah, very true on that all. Um, I think, you know, like we do have students whose dream is to own their own business. And so being able to, to look at their academic plan in such a way, that's where you would use your, your GE courses, for example, to shore up what the major doesn't satisfy in wanting them to do that. Um, you know, the other area that I can only think of is, as you say, the non-traditional. And that's certainly an area I'm not at all familiar with to be able to counsel on. Uh, with regards to what would you need to do to, to start your own initiatives on a business or what have you. Um, I certainly would be open to other suggestions on that one. Um, but to use the current educational system, it's looking at, I think that's the thing, helping people understand that you need to look beyond, some of our students are, are barely able to look at the end of the week, let alone the end of a semester, let alone the end of an academic degree. And so it's getting to, to that point where they can start visioning and looking at their future and then starting to move backward. And part of our academic plan helps with that mindset. Because again, we look at, okay, this is your ultimate goal. These are all the courses that you need to take. This is how we're going to fit them in to your week or your semesters. If it doesn't work, well, we have plan B ready to go. 
type of a deal. Um, so it's helping them to look at more than just a semester in advance, more than anything else. Um, and then looking at their incremental goals that will get them to that ultimate goal that they want. So I can certainly help them in the arena of the, the educational world and the system that now exists. Um, but entrepreneurially, oof, I would be open for suggestions on that one. Uh, and can you um, can you talk about uh, the the transferring um, to the university? And uh, have you had any students uh, who would like pursue ministry, uh, for example, ever transfer to say like um, APU um, uh, to pursue a, a theology degree? Mm -hmm. uh, have you had that before? Yeah. Actually, we, um, one of our students, Manny, um, a couple of uh, proud moments um, is first is Gary, who is on the video, Gary Baines. He is now a board member with us, which is really cool. And he is an entrepreneur. He ended up starting, he got his degree um, in virtual techie stuff um, through UCLA. He is now um, a masseuse. He got his own business and got himself trained in that. So, uh, but he's now a board member. But Manny Simpson, he graduated with us a year ago and transferred to APU. Oh. And so our transfer is not just for the, the UC or CSU systems, also private universities. Mm -hmm. um, we're now in communication with Biola University to look and see how we can coordinate because we do have one student at the moment who's interested in Biola. Mm -hmm. So um, most certainly we do communicate with the universities um, with regards, you know, what do our students need to transfer? And we do the assist.org, which is that document that tells us what our students need to take at community college that gets them ready to transfer then as a junior. So there, there's about three or four different documents that we pull together in creating this plan for them. Nice. nice. Yeah. And then um, have you had any experience with uh, students who may want to pursue uh, going to uh, HBCU uh, that had of um, a transfer to HBCUs, historically black colleges um, out of the community college? Yeah. Yeah. We, we did have a student who wanted to do that actually about four years ago. And we're in the process of getting that together because we we had a student transfer to a New York university. Um, and we were in the process of getting him ready to go to that university. And he ended up moving. <laughs> so um, actually to the state. So he was at least closer to it that he finished his community college experience there and then transferred. Gotcha. So, you know, we're not restricting our students to just California for transferring. And then last question that I have, have you had any experience with, you know, there are pastors that are on this um, uh, call um, who, um, you know, most of the leaders that we work with, Cedric and I work with are bivocational leaders, um, some of whom may have um, not gone to uh, college. Um, and so uh, have you ever had an opportunity to work with, say, a pastor um, who was currently pastoring a church, but then uh, became part of your Ascending Lights program? Yeah, um, good question. That one we have not um, been able to do. And one of the criteria also is that we're unable to accept um, children of pastors mm -hmm. and children of full-time church leaders. Mm -hmm. um, the reason being in the past, um, they did attempt it. And this was before me, um, but it ended up creating a lot of tension actually in the church. Mm -hmm. um, kind of feeling that there was like favoritism and, and such like that. Mm -hmm. um, so we do accept children of ministers in church who are only like 20 or fewer hours a month type of a deal. Mm -hmm. um, we, in addition to pastors applying for a student, we also will accept a church leader. So someone who's involved in perhaps um, youth ministry or music or or what or worship ministry um the only caveat for that is the pastor needs to know that this student is being considered 
for an application because we want to make sure everyone is on the same page and the application asks that question um, in terms of the application is it the pastor that does the application for the candidates no it can be the church leader as well church leader as well yeah yeah so you know for those of you who are pastors who um have various church um, leaders at your particular church feel very free to share this information with them. I'd be more than happy to, to have another conversation, setting up a Zoom call to give another presentation to them, for them to ask questions, what have you. Uh, we do currently have students available that we can accept. So for the spring semester, so um, more than happy to get the ball rolling on any kind of an application as far as we're concerned. Thank you. Any other questions? from the participants so so i think you know maybe um peter for a um i'm gonna now just answer the question about our um our website so i just put it up there on the chat um I'd love to be able to 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 follow up with you, uh, Manny, who I just talked about, who is attending APU at the moment. He's also someone. For some reason, we don't know why. Uh, when I started, it was pretty much 50-50 African American students versus Latinos. Mm -hmm. Manny was our last African American student to graduate, and that was a year ago. And so we've been trying to really reach out to the African-American community and such, and realizing, you know what, probably our best bet for that is to get one of our students. And so Manny, a graduate, oh my gosh, talk about a wonderful town crier for Ascending Lights. I mean, he's just been fantastic. So we've actually hired Manny to reach out to the African-American community churches. And so, I mean, I'd be more than happy to have Manny follow up with any of you, um, including other contacts that you may feel that would be worthwhile. I mean, some of you mentioned different organizations or businesses, um, just looking at being creative of how we can reach out um, for all of that. And Manny is really big on trying to empower, you know, especially the African American male, you know, but um, we, so yeah. Uh, this is great. Any other questions? All right. Well, we uh, definitely uh, want to thank you, Anne, for uh, your time today and um, all of the great information that you have uh, given us. Um, and I think that um, you know, at this point, um, everyone um, you know, feels good about the information that they uh, have heard. Um, and so what we will uh, again do, this is this was being recorded. And so once it's done processing, Cedric will send it out and so you can have it um, to go back over and share with others uh, as well in your own networks. Um, and then to uh, reach out uh, to uh, Anne. Um, you can, um, one, go to the website to learn more about Ascending Lights, and is there a, uh, and she just put her contact information in, so yeah. if you want to uh, take her phone number down and her email address, you're welcome to do that as well. If you want to save the chat, um, just click on the three uh, ellipses there uh, next to the word file, um, and once, uh, when you click on that, it says save chat, and once this uh, Zoom session ends, it will uh, save to your computer. I mean, then you can go back and grab all that information there in the chat. Thank you again, Anne. We really, really, really appreciate it. And I just Thank look you, forward to, to a more partnership and, um, and recruiting African-American men and women um, yep. uh, for, for this program. Very certainly. And thank you all and continued prayers for you that are, you know, finding new ways of ministering to your churches. I mean, yeah. different, different world. You have anything, Cedric, you want to close with? No, just thank you, Ann. Good to see you again. Thank you for the information. Likewise. And uh, as my sentiments are the same as Peter's, uh, looking forward to uh, seeing how we can partner and uh, get more African-American men and women 
into the program through uh, the village, uh, through our respective ministries and some other work that he and I are doing uh, as well. So looking forward to partnering with you as we move forward. Can you close us out, Cedric, in prayer? Sure. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for this time and this space and this opportunity. Uh, we, pray, we pray blessings upon Anne and the work that they are doing at Ascending Lights. Uh, uh, just continue to increase their efforts, uh, open up doors and, of opportunity and pour out windows, pour out blessings from windows uh, in heaven, Heavenly Father, upon the work that they are doing. We pray, Lord, for each person represented here today. We pray for their ministries uh, uh, in particular. Uh, we pray for their families, and we just pray for this nation, Heavenly Father. Uh, you know what is going on in the world. Uh, we pray for peace and peace that goes beyond any of our understandings as we, as we move forward. And so, Heavenly Father, bless us upon today. Bless uh, those of us who are pastoring and ministering and that will stand tomorrow or, or record tomorrow. Uh, to get the word of the gospel out to your people, uh, Heavenly Father. And we just thank you for the work that we are doing. We are appreciative and humbled uh, to be your servants and your ambassadors in this world. It's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Let us all say amen. 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 All right. Amen. We'll see you all next village. <laughs>